All righty guys, I'm here with Jonah Fury. Fury. Yeah, like Fury. Fury. Dude, thanks for being here with me. No worries, bro. I live here. Thank you for <laughs> coming here, yeah. This guy right here is the whole entire reason why I decided to move into my car, pretty much. He's the one who taught me everything. He went out of his way to give me a call when I didn't really know what I was doing, and he pretty much hooked it up. I've got like a series of questions I'm gonna ask him. And uh, we're pretty much both gonna kind of be like, this is how it happened for me. This is uh, how it, how he did it. For everyone that doesn't know who you are, give us like a brief description of your YouTube channel and pretty much who you are. I'm just right now in the present. I'm just a student at UL, uh, the University of Louisiana, which is like almost where we're shooting. Uh, I did live in my car for over a year, about a year and three months, I believe. And uh, just to save money, that was the whole point. I've been documenting my journey from about, I think I was 17 whenever I first started recording videos, because uh, I had left my house at 17. So kind of just went from there. Started recording videos, and I've been documenting my life ever since. And it's mostly pertains to my business ventures, investing, things like that, while I get my, I'm double majoring in economics and finance, and uh, that's it, really. Just all my business ventures, my investing, stocks, business, all that stuff. That's, it's basically me documenting and anything I think is important is what I'm here gonna see on my channel. And that's awesome. And you're only 19, 20 years old? 19 and 20 next Saturday, October 5th, so send me presents. So what made you decide to start your channel? Like decide to start making videos? So I was like the majority of people and I thought it was dumb to live in your car. So I was like, you know, if I'm gonna do this, Let's record it. <laughs> That's really, that was really why I started it. And uh, my first video ever, so I had that thought in my head. And I'm sitting there, it's my first semester, I've taken a couple weeks, like my first couple weeks into college. And I'm sitting there in a coffee shop on campus. And I'm talking to the barista. And I'm like, man, I've been thinking about starting a channel. She didn't know that I already lived in my car, of course. And uh, about money and things, because that was the whole point of living in my car, was about money. And so I was like, sketched out a quick video about saving money and I walked to the park which we're here now and shot uh, I think it was like seven ways to save money uh, the cringiest thing ever so if you want to really enjoy yourself go check that video out so we were just talking about how it gets hot living in your car like I lived in South Florida so obviously or er, it got hot there like during the middle of the night I would have to turn on the air conditioner probably twice during the night waking up so I would sleep in like four hour increments pretty much was right. it the same for you or Four hour. I, I was already sleeping in small increments because of how much I worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see that in the day in life video. Mine was weird, so I realized that there were certain small tweaks I would have to make because you're living in a car, you're not living in a house. Right. But my rotation of living in my car started in the winter months, so I didn't have to deal with that. Like, it, it was just beginning to be October. So, like, it just started to cool off like this. So, the night times were pretty cool, you know? But you would have to get out of bed. Like, you can't. My sleep schedule is like pushed a little bit towards the morning, so I would have to hurry up and get out of bed. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. even be able to sleep if I wanted to, because you'll just die, literally. Like that's yeah. how hot it gets in your car. That's sun, man. And so I kind of went to the store, was looking for options, looking for options. But there's these little things, and I'm pretty sure it's just specific to my car. I had a 1999 Camaro, and yep. the lighter, cigarette lighters, they would be the electricity would steady run through them regardless if the car was on or not. And I would put the plug that in and it had two fans. That's how I deal with the summers. And it wasn't really much dealing. It was more like coping. Yeah, it was brutal. Damn. <laughs> That's insane. I got used to it though and I would wear as least clothes as possible without a cop. Being, yeah. Being embarrassed of a cop pulling up to my car just in case. Right. So it I, had to be enough clothes. I get that question too. Like, how do you sleep? Do you sleep with your clothes on? I'm like, I just sleep gym shorts. I found and the like shortest slim... shorts I could find and a tank top. Exactly. Was like ideal for summer. How long did you sleep in your car before, I guess, you moved in a different direction? What really happened was, is me and my current now wife were kind of like, doing our own things and we're different cities we were just girlfriend and boyfriend I'm sitting here doing drastic things like living in my car to save money and uh, as we were talking and growing our relationship she's been with me since I was living in my car and she thought it was dumb so did her parents so is everybody else in the world but <laughs> it's I mean, inevitable it's right there yeah, yeah. so well, it didn't I was never in a different direction like my mindset stayed the same what happened was I got the opportunity to live for free somewhere else in obviously a more ideal situation. Makes so sense. If I, what I advise to the subscribers or anybody watching this, if you're thinking about living in your car to save money, try family first. I mean, of course, it's not everybody's option. That's why I left my house. That's why I lived in my car at the very beginning. But secondary family, friends, like try, I'm no, 
I didn't want to do that because it that feels like taking. You know, whenever I'm in my car, it's like I'm acting on life. It's not like a life acting on me. And they would kind of like, I feel like if I would live somewhere for free, that I was somebody that wasn't family. Yeah. Uh, and there's no exchange of value. Mm -hmm. It's it doesn't that that hurts. It's me. almost like that almost taking bad. advantage. I that guess, makes kinda. me feel bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I did have an office space set up at a friend's house where I would go during the day, and if I wanted to cook, they would let me. And I was like, no, I can't do that. Like, yeah, it voids how I feel about this. Like, I brought this onto myself, so I had to really do that. They would let me use my computer there. I had a desktop, so it had to be plugged into a freaking wall. And speaking of yeah. friends, isn't that where you would get your mail? Is if I'm correct, or I did. I believe I've asked him for his address. He he lived in an apartment complex. Shout out to Reese and the, the other Shout three dudes Reese. I was really felt friends with. See, I had to get a PO box. I did get eventually. I did get a PO box, but I did ask him for his address a couple times for like. I remember having to send in a specific wire to connect my Mac to my uh, camera. I asked him for the address for that. Right. Uh, I remember ordering canned chicken off of Amazon to see how cheap it was. I remember asking him his address for that. <laughs> and uh, after that, I was like. Just everything I would ask somebody to do, I was like, I can't keep depending on people. Yeah. Like, I don't like, I hate that feeling. And uh, so I was like, let me go get a P.O. box. Got a P.O. box. That was actually, if you're going to live in your car for a substantial, at least, I would say a year, I would get a P.O. box. Or six months to a year or more, I would get a P.O. box. Okay, guys, sorry about the sun. Uh, so the most basic questions in the world that everyone pretty much wants to know, where did you sleep? Well, first things <laughs> first, I slept here. It is a, uh, what is it? I don't know what you, I don't think this is a private. I think it was a public park, and uh, there's parking that you can't stay overnight. But I would, there's parking on the outer layers that you can stay overnight. So this is one of the spots, main spots. I stayed here for months, I believe. It was months at a time. It was my third semester in college where I was just here most of the time. Another place was the parking lots of huge apartment complexes. They just don't really do the. As long as you're not in one of those spots where they rent to have cover over their cars you don't really get noticed uh but i made i've gotten busted for that and like the lady <laughs> from the front desk knocked on my door like in the morning was like you can't do this here Dang. i'm sitting there drenched in sweat because it's, it's louisiana right i made a video about that i was like i'm gonna buy that apartment complex just because of that whole situation i remember that yeah and then another place is walmart's if you're in a pinch those are always worth in the back i've only had one bad experience where this like car like pulled up behind me flash like high beams on and like fist on the the horn mm -hmm. like they knew who I was or something and I like left and went to a, <laughs> and the other place was I probably don't recommend because you just don't want your personal life and like I guess this people really bugging you about it but I was in a I parked my car in the back alley as you guys know I used to work in an ice cream shop and there's a back alley to that place where the employees would park and I that day I actually pulled back over there uh, and that's just where I slept the most those are the four places I've slept the most so that's awesome. I, I mostly sleep in Walmart parking lots. That's like my go-to. Uh, also, Planet Fitness is really good because, or any 24-hour. good uh, amount of security. Walmarts yeah. and stuff. They've got cameras and stuff, like anything. Right. Yeah, there's always <laughs> cars in a freaking parking lot. There's always cars in a Walmart parking lot. Right. It makes you feel way more comfortable. Casinos, hospitals, Casinos. anything that's pretty much 24-hour is huge your best bet. business. Lots of parking. So, how did, uh, how did food and groceries work for you? Uh, this is like... What I'm realizing now is probably the worst part about what I was doing uh, because of health costs in the future, but I'm over that now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel and, you. <laughs> and I go back to that video of like what I was eating, I was like, damn, that's a lot of sodium. But uh, basically it was a diet of canned chicken, protein shakes. So I mean, I guess I was getting the good stuff. I, I never really ate vegetables, I guess. Yeah. But I did have canned, oh, I lie, I lie, I lie. I remember I was getting canned foods. That was basically my deal. Canned, canned chicken. foods that I like. Canned chicken, I, I liked canned peas. Like you didn't have to cook that. I mean, it says to warm it up, but I mean, canned beans as well. Uh, snacks as in Cheez-Its, which are high in protein. Uh, crackers, what else? Peanut butter could stay in your car. There was a series yep. of things that I like discovered, but I have a video on that of like everything that I used whenever I was uh, living in my car. Yeah. <laughs> all, we, all we spent like I think it was like 35 bucks a week. I find myself getting hungry like because there's not that many carbs in a can of chicken. Mm -hmm. And just so you guys know, the amount of sodium that's in the canned chicken like drops drastically whenever you drain the water out of it. The water is what's trying huh. to preserve the chicken that's why it's in you know wow. so draining the okay. juice out of any of the canned foods like reduces the amount of sodium you're actually intaking which 
made me feel a little bit better about what I was doing. Uh, I've tried <laughs> yeah. everything else. Like, I like canned tuna a lot. I did eat that a lot. Uh, I didn't like the canned beef that they had, so that was one thing I did like. Man. You know, they go so far with canned foods, but right. I could still eat canned chicken to this day. So did you have like maybe like a microwave that you kept in your car? Did you have a cooler? Did you have any of those like, you know, hot, cold or just basic it was dry food? Anything that could withstand heat and most things like you're probably not even supposed to. Most things that could withstand <laughs> heat and uh, that was it. That place that I set up, I set up a computer at a friend's house that we tried to have a business with mm -hmm. and uh, I would cook sometimes there. But like how long can I really? do that because you can't store cooked food in your car either so it's kind of like that was basically what I did it was everything anything that lasts long stays in your car and could withstand the heat how was your mental state like through li like living in your car trying to save money trying to figure your life out right right it's great I'm glad you asked this question uh, <laughs> <laughs> no but uh so like there's this weird thing that went on this thing whenever I start moved back into a house Dude, I lost like so much motivation. I don't know. Like, there's this weird thing. Whenever I first moved into my car, it was like penny pinching to the cent, and I was just so motivated. I put out way more videos. I don't know. I was insanely motivated whenever I was living in my car. It was like I gotta prove something. I'm by my own. I was on loan. It was like back against the wall type situation. And whenever you force yourself into that, it really could change your life. Like, change how you think. And I realized that you have to keep that mindset. You can't get comfortable. Like, and not being in your car could make you feel comfortable, like being in a house or something like that. You don't realize right. how comfortable you are. Yeah. So it's really motivating. Like it was the best I've ever felt positively in my life was living in my car, which is weird to correlate, but. I can completely relate though. Yeah, pretty much I just wanted to take control of my life. That's, that's kind of why I moved into it. And also to save money, obviously. Um, and just, I, I guess it was just kind of like a, a screw you type thing. Like, I can make this happen and I'm going to make it want. happen. Yeah, make it happen. I just wanted to ask Jonah one more question just to wrap it up. So pretty much like what has it been like outside of living in your car now? Because you've got the wife, you know, you're starting businesses. Like, how did it all work out? How did you end up being able to get out of your car pretty much. I don't want you to die by that car. Kind of reminds me back to the last question you had asked me. And uh, you know, it was really motivating for me to have the uh, living in a car and all that. So it kind of just, I don't know if I've gotten comfortable. I don't know, I can't really measure my productivity from living in my car, but I saved like 95% of my income and that was really motivating. And I don't know if I've gotten too comfortable, that's kind of my thing. You know, I guess I, I've done a lot of things since I've gotten out of my car, but I'm kind of just scared. That's how I kind of feel. I'm scared of being comfortable. That's really how I feel now that I've gotten out of my car. You know, you got married, you're like, you got other responsibilities, and it's like, are you still going to work as hard, or are you going to work even harder because you have right all these other things? Are you going to work less because you have a house now? Like, not that I own or anything. It's just like, at what line, what point is there, like, I'm worried that not putting myself in back against the wall is going to make me an average person. I'm scared of being average. Make sure to go and like and subscribe to all of his videos and just to subscribe to the one channel. If you want to, you know, yeah. help a man out. I mean, it's been two years and nothing's happened on my YouTube channel, but who cares? I'm not, I'm not <laughs> complaining. But, I mean, you can go over there if you want to. We're pretty much in the same boat. Two I'm years just and we're just, you know. Man. I'm just documenting. This is Jonah Furry. Make sure Jonah to check Furry. him out. Thanks Furry. for getting together with me and spending so much time with me, dude. See you, my man. <laughs>